really nice. That's the, how the end of the song goes. It is. We can blend it right in. Yeah. I was trying to sing along. <laughs> Welcome. Yeah. Hey, Hi. guys. Hey, guys. Here we are for episode... Which one is it? Seven? Seven. Okay. I gotta keep track of this. Okay. Or we gotta write it down. Yeah. We've just got so many episodes. Oh, my gosh. Oh, man. Life is hard. Life's hard being a celebrity. Yeah. What can I say? <laughs> Okay, well, welcome, guys, to And That's Why We Drink. We are here to tell you some ghost stories and some murder stories and... Some stories about why it's hard to be a 20-something. Or just a human in general, Just a human, yeah. Yeah. It is hard, and that's why we drink. Today I came over to Christine's, and she texted me and said, by the way, my place is a disaster, and I said, don't worry, I too am a disaster. So (laughs) So all is right with the world. (laughs) And that's why we drink. And that's why we drink. All right. Well, how have you been? I haven't seen you in a million years, I, know. I feel. I feel like you're a long lost friend. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Back in my life. Um, it's been two weeks since we've seen each other. Yeah. And in that sp- t- span of time, I became no longer unemployed. Yay! I know. I'm super happy and I have two jobs and I like both of them. Yeah. Now you have more jobs than I do. Yay. I miss having more jobs than you. That's how I, I know. <laughs> you still get paid more than me. So like. Barely. But still. By like a pinch, whatever. We'll we'll call it even. Okay. Um. So I'm drinking for happy reasons, honestly, because I'm just very happy this week because I'm actually getting a paycheck. Meanwhile, I wrote notes for all the reasons I'm fucking drinking. Oh great. Okay. So uh, that's my uh, listen. I'm happy this week. Good. I'm not. All right. Um. You this ready? Is, this is the floor is yours. Okay. Uh. We all know I'm moving. I my by the way, someone asked on Twitter if my roommate ever found out. <laughs> like I'm just gonna leave like. Like a ship in the night. I think we were all all hoping you would just kind of leave a note. And just ghost him. Yeah. Uh, and be like, thanks for everything. Peace. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> uh, no, I told him eventually. It actually worked out in his favor. His best friend is taking my spot. Oh, we'll see. So I'm moving and I'm moving in the next 48 hours. Oh, shit. No pressure. Also, I have people coming into town that I'm entertaining. Also, no pressure. Also, I have to find time to move the big furniture like my mattress. Oh, God. No pressure. And I have to do all this before the end of the week because I fly out to Nashville for the weekend. No fucking pressure. So Wait, and you're starting a new job on Monday, which is the biggest one. Yeah. So anyway, all of this is happening at once. No pressure. I'm also doing all this while I'm about to start a new job in the same week. Right. That's fun. Um, Also, I have another reason, too. Uh, Oh, no, I don't. Oh, that's good. (laughs) Well, I mean, it's all just like little like bullet points of that, basically. Like, okay, I had to get rid of my lava lamp (gasps) that I've had. Wait, that's really sad to me. Well, I've had it since I was in fourth grade. Yeah, I got one in fourth grade, too, and I miss it it dearly. It was like, it was, it just was magical because it, it's worked up until now. I've never changed the light bulb on it. Like, it's like Hanukkah. Like, it's just, (laughs) it's, it's basically the same thing. (laughs) It's like a menorah, but made of lava. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but so like I've never had to fix it and then when I got to this apartment like it's gone with me to college and grad school Aww. like in Boston and everything and then I brought it to this place and the light doesn't work anymore and it's so old because the lava lamp I got it in 2001 and so they don't make no! lights for it anymore maybe so I, I'll call my mom have her unscrew ours it's too late I already gave it away <gasps> I know. It, it was a hard parting. It was really tragic. Think Toy Story when Andy sang yeah. See ya. Anyway, that's like just stupid things like that. Like I'm just missing inanimate objects that don't miss me back. Anyway, well, at that's least why it I served drink. a long good life. It did. So anyway, that's why I drink. That is real reasons. What are you drinking? Um, so listen, I don't want anyone to get upset. I'm already upset. I can look I see what's happening. I this is what I'm drinking today. It's a canned old, wine. It's a canned <laughs> wine. <laughs> it's a can. I'm just like <laughs> dropping deeper and deeper into despair. First the boxes. No, 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 no. It is not canned wine. I got it set the record straight. Um, it's a PBR. It's a PBR. It's a beer because the job I started, uh, it's like this. I'm not even joking. It's just like a comedy show featuring dogs. It's called Two Girls, One Pup. Starring... <laughs> Ew. Starring Christine and Gio, I'm sure. And if you if you don't know the reference, please don't look it up. And also, <laughs> I'm not going to explain it to you. <laughs> My Moving mother's going to text me now and be like, what is this? My parents are going to be like, let's Google it. <laughs> don't. Please don't. If you don't understand the reference, you don't need to. And don't, don't try to learn what Lemon Party is either. <laughs> and don't add to this. 
Uh, anyway, so the PBR is one of the sponsors, and so I got a bunch of beer afterward. So I'm drinking so the PBR. Gulp it down. So switching up a little bit. Anyway. I'll tell you what I'm drinking, Christine. <laughs> since we you know all, what? I never know. ask. I'm such an asshole. <laughs> I know. Uh, I'm still like, so focused on my beer. I literally was just making eyes at you about like, ask me about my fucking milkshake. I was milkshake. just <laughs> sipping my beer and staring, <laughs> staring right back at you with a loving gaze. Oh, I just punched your dog in the face. I'm sorry. <laughs> what is wrong with you? <laughs> He's good. He's kissing my hand now. This is like a mess of an, of an intro. <laughs> just wait till I get to my story. It's not well done. Okay. By the way, I'm drinking a chocolate milkshake from... Oh yeah. What are you drinking? <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe i can edit it so i no no that... this is where we I'll are i'll just like cut it out and it'll be awkward like so what do you drink i'm drinking a chocolate milkshake <laughs> no i'm i'm drinking a chocolate milkshake from house of pies which is right across the street listen house of pies don't tell people where i live <laughs> <laughs> it's right across the street from you turn right and then look at the door with the stop <laughs> there's a green door I like to pretend that people actually <laughs> care about where I live. I'm sure that they don't, but you well, know. Also, there's a lot of there's a lot of places they'd have to find you at. You know, yeah. And there's a lot of. It's not like there's house of pies and then one. Well, there's house. also a Masonic lodge across the street. <laughs> wow, so, you're really like triangulating. Well, no. So I'm saying maybe that's where I live. They don't know what direction I live in. Yeah, maybe you're a Mason. Maybe you're a woman Mason. I'm those a exist. Mason. Those women can't be those. Or can they? Shut up. Okay. I've only had three sips of my PBR. <laughs> let's get moving. Do you All have right. any uh, fun facts for us? I know I'm drinking beer, but... Yeah, I let's pretend you're... you're drinking wine so yeah. this is relevant. It's not hard to pretend I'm drinking wine. Yeah. Yeah, it's not. Okay. One ton of grapes makes about 60 cases of wine. Jeez. One ton is 2,000 pounds? 2,000 pounds of grapes. a ton was 1,000 pounds? No, it is... It's 2,000. How 2, many pounds are in a ton? 2,000. Okay, I believe you. It makes about... You're still checking. I'm, I'm watching you check. Uh, okay, you're right. 2,000 pounds of grapes make 60 cases of wine or 720 bottles, which is what you probably consume in a year. So 2,000 grapes. 2,000 pounds of grapes. Jeez. Wait, so how many bottles are in a case? 12? I guess. This math is too much Why did me. you ask me to do math right now? Because I'm trying to spite you. <sighs> okay, so, but here's the inverse part of it. One bottle of wine contains contains 2.8 pounds of grapes. Holy crap, it's so healthy. <laughs> it is! Sure. Let's uh, call it that. Ask a doctor. Mm, well, you're dating one, so I guess that Yeah, he works. lets me drink all the wine I want. Good. Uh, okay, so I have a milkshake fact, too. If you're, if you're aching for that. I'm aching for it. Okay, so the world's most expensive milkshake to date is in a place called Cardiff. I think it's in the UK. That's, yeah. Okay. So to celebrate um, Vanilla Milkshake Day, uh, the they had, in honor of that, they did the most expensive milkshake, which was, uh, I'll just describe the ingredients first, and then I'll like let you... Like gold? Calm flakes. down. Calm down. Do you even want me to t do this? Okay. It's made from Tahitian vanilla pods, rich Jersey milk, which I don't know what that means. Whoa. Strands of saffron, and then includes sprinkles of 23 count edible gold leaves. Whoa. Shavings of Italian black truffle. Jeez. And then Tuscan chocolate, one of the world's most expensive chocolates. And uh, it cost, do you want to guess how much a glass? Oh my God. Um... $800? No. Good Lord Jesus. No, it was $50 a glass. Oh, sorry. <laughs> just totally. We'll get that out. I just, wow, like not that. That's why I hate the guessing game because people always go higher and then I'm like, oh, now my fact isn't as fun. But That's okay. You would have been... I just know that there is that... It's like a, a dessert in New York City that costs like $2,500. Oh, really? Yeah, and they put like all this gold leaf and shit on oh, it. Oh, like, I believe it. And they grate diamonds into it. I'm like, what is wrong with people? Anyway, $50 a glass That's is the still world's most expensive. freaking expensive milkshake. milkshake. We should yeah. get you one on our thousandth episode. Okay. We're our 50th episode. Yeah, because a thousand's a long way away. <laughs> That's a thousand weeks away. Or maybe we'll do a thousand <laughs> so that we never actually have to buy the 50th or the $50 milkshake. Great. We'll just put it really far away when we're... Oh. Not doing this podcast anymore. Okay. Or when we're rich and famous and can afford it. Put the beer in your mouth. <laughs> Just put the beer in your mouth. <laughs> Guys, I'm in like a struggle mode. I'm loving watching this happen because is... I feel really like superior. <laughs> this is the first time that's happened. This is 
I my first work week ever in like nine months and so it just totally drained my whole being like I don't yeah. I'm not used to it I've never seen you function this way I'm not used to getting up at 6 30 every morning I'm not all just right gonna be honest it's been a while oh I had something like an update about uh something I made at work this was like segueing into I saw Logan oh I'm seeing it tomorrow it's real I made okay so this was the what I want to tell you about my work we made the wolverine claws yeah yeah so cool there's a picture of em like holding them so if you see the wolverine claws i'm so excited ah i'm gonna scream them first i'm gonna scream it you touch them i touched them way before hugh jackman ever put them in his hands so now he has your germs on him he's welcome you're welcome Hugh. oh also um do you watch it's always sunny uh i fucking love that show okay so they just came out with uh I wasn't allowed to talk about it for a while, so I didn't know when I could address it to people, but my friend told me it's out now. That there's a Valentine's Day episode that came out oh, this yeah. season. Okay, all those <laughs> Valentine's Day cards, that's my handwriting. Oh my god! I did know. you Oh fuck, did you keep one? Can you like Yeah, get one? I have I have <gasps> I made extras. One of the cards says, Do you look like a bird? <laughs> and another one says something like, uh I guess Charlie in the show he can't read. So they say something like, I don't even know why I'm writing this, you can't read. <laughs> But all of that is, if you look at it, all the cards are the same fucking handwriting because I did it. Oh my God. You have the craziest, weirdest job ever. I really never thought this job was even a job. It's really weird. Like you're crafting for famous TV shows. Oh, I do what I can. Okay. So I got an update actually, before we get into the stories from a Twitter user named Curious Blonde. Um, and she sent us a message. Um, she said, Hey, Evan, Christine and Gio. Oh, Gio says Hi. Uh, she says, I'm really enjoying your podcast. The demon dog episode actually freaked me out so much. I had to get out of the bathtub and call a friend to talk <laughs> me down. <laughs> she said my cats would scare away all the potential hellhounds, which is totally accurate. But truly that black dog shit scares me so much. I don't oh, know yeah. why. It's just so creepy. Uh, since I'm in Chicago and I just wanted to share some fun facts about episode five. Uh, a couple years ago, the Chicago PD opened up a DNA case to try and see if they could link some old missing persons cases with DNA from John Wayne Gacy's victims, mm. who we talked about in the last... Oh, sorry. It was two episodes ago. Mm-hmm. Um, she says, as far as I know, this case is ongoing, and at least one person they believed to be a victim was exhumed, and DNA showed he was not the boy that they thought he was and that they had buried him as. Oh. So they don't know who he is. Uh, but they, the good part is that the person they thought that the little boy was was actually found alive in Florida oh. and he had like run away from home as a teenager and didn't even know his parents were looking for him for Aww. years and years and years. So they were reunited and I guess they said like he couldn't stop crying and this was like a really recent story. So his family, oh, wow. he and his family were reunited. He moved back to Alabama to be with his uh, siblings. She said, oh, final fun fact. She has like so much to add to our podcast. My grandparents are retired professional clowns, and I still kind of want to go to clown college. So M may be mortified, but she's in good company in that clown car. Keep <sighs> up the good work. Cheers. I, I really thought we were going to leave the whole clowning thing in the past episode, but I guess it's going to haunt me forever. It might. It's never going to go away. So many people tweeted out to me, talking to me about being a clown. I know. And it's just... And that's why we drink. And that's why... I drink. Why do uh, other people drink, Em? Why don't you tell us a fun Well, I'm going to try my best to tell you, but let's get one thing straight away. This is scattered as shit. <laughs> These <laughs> notes. I was... Because I... A lot of people have been saying really nice things about us and that we're well-informed. So I'm glad that people can understand then that when I went to go fact-checked on multiple other websites... I was finding more and more information, and so it's all... That's hard. It's not chronologically sound. Some are a lot harder to, like, I'm going to be jumping straight. back and forth. That's fine. Okay. I had not yet done a haunted jail, <gasps> so I wanted to do Fun. that. Fun. So this is the Eastern State Penitentiary in oh, Philadelphia. Cool. Which I've been told is... Well, I've been told personally by many websites <laughs> that it is one of the most haunted places in the world. Shit. In the world. Um, what? what was that? I was just ex- in the world. I was just excited because everything else so far has been like in America. Oh sure, or like on the Eastern Seaboard. Mm-hmm. No, nothing was that, but maybe. Okay, so the Eastern State Penitentiary was built in 1829, and Ben Franklin was involved in its construction. I guess up until this point, jails weren't really taken seriously. Like they, like they were jails that you could probably 
easily break out of or people were only staying for a little bit of time and then weren't actually learning anything. So this was the first jail where they really emphasized like reform and mm. even though they did it in a really fucked up 1800s way. Sounds like the same thing with like mental health facilities back then where it, Yeah, like you're trying but you're really just making things no, worse. Yeah, exactly. So when they constructed this, they wanted it to look like a gothic church because back then super religious. Okay, motorcycle. That's my friend. <laughs> Back then, they really wanted, like, religion to be a part of you, you know, rebuilding yourself. Mm -hmm. So they wanted it to look like a church so you could only be alone with God. And it was the first uh, task they decided to go with is uh, implement solitary confinement. Ugh. So this is the first jail to ever do solitary confinement. That shit is not cool. No, it's not. Ugh. When they decided that they were going to do solitary confinement... Originally, this jail was meant where all of the cells were solitary confinement. Oh, God. So if you went there, you were so, like you were confined by yourself. And um, it was supposed to hold 253 inmates with 253 solitary confinement cells for you to spend in during your entire sentence there. Oh, so it wasn't like, oh, there's like a an outdoor field where you can no. run. So they're just Like they were out in. there for a, like you had an hour a day where you could go outside, but you were in in individual cages away from <gasps> other people what so the you, fuck so you couldn't even see other people and they were so strict about you even talking to anyone like if they were like moving you from your cell to something else um they would it was called bagging and they would put a dark like wool hood over your face so you couldn't see or hear or talk to anyone around you what? like so you're totally confined no matter where you are what you're doing um I also want to do a fun fact about this and mention that when this jail got built, it was the most expensive building to have been created in the U.S. Like it was the really it was seven hundred seventy three thousand dollars in shit. the eighteen hundreds. Um, so originally, solitary confinement was called the Pennsylvania system because they were the only people doing it. Fucking Pennsylvania. Ah, yeah, yeah. And even though they were the first known prison to do it. Very quickly, other prisons started following suit because they're like, oh, well, if they're going to be the ones that are really strict and, you know, they have a really good turnout or, like, like successful inmates changing, we want to do that, too. So at, this is what caused solitary confinement everywhere. Oh, okay. So thanks, Eastern State. Yeah, fuck you. Um, so they weren't even allowed to interact with each other. They didn't exercise together. They were bagged. Um, many killed themselves, obviously. And the others... Wait, how? Like... Smashing their heads in the walls? I'll tell you. Later. Oh, my God. Uh, so they would... A lot of them drove insane. Sure. Which is what they still fucking do. Exactly. In places where this is going on. Um, they... The, the jail ended up lasting until 1971. But even in the early 1900s, so many people were going crazy from solitary confinement. They actually ended it in 1913. Thank God. So they only had... Solitary confinement from 1830s to 1913, which, you know, is still like oh, yeah. 70 years. Um, Can I ask, like, who did they put it? Was it people who were murderers or? So they it was they had different cell blocks for people who committed different things. So they had uh, like a whole cell block just for people who had who did money shit. Mm -hmm. There was a whole uh area for people who burglarized or were carrying weapons or like, I mean, it was all blocked off. Sure. So different inmates were all in the, different sec in the same section. Actually, one of the people that stayed there was Al Capone. Oh, um, we'll get to him, but he was in cell block eight, cell one. Interesting. I had to look deep for that one. <laughs> See, <laughs> well-informed and well-researched. I do what I can. Our trademark. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, even though they got rid of solitary confinement, they were like, okay, well, we'll just put a bunch of really strict wardens in there. And there was one warden named Warden Smith, and they called him hard-boiled, which I don't, I don't understand. Like an egg? Yeah. Okay. But you know, like, <laughs> porn stash and uh, yeah. Orange is New Black? Like, he was a dick. Like, this guy. Like, this guy was a dick. Um, Not good. And so from the tw 1920s, 1930s... Uh, he was in charge, and at that time, people knew that he was insane. Like, he was just, like, the strictest person in the world. And so only really, really bad people went there. Okay. Because, like, they were the only people who deserved it, quote. Sure. But uh, he was 
he was really shitty. Like back then, because there wasn't really any laws defending prisoners, he got away with a lot of torture. <gasps> yeah. So there were five things that he did that were um, ultimate punishments if he misbehaved or tried to escape or tried to talk to someone or anything like that. So the first one was he would just starve you, um, which is the lightest punishment. Oh, God. The next one was, uh, it's called a water bath, where they would only do it during the winter because that's extra shitty. And they would uh, chain you down to a bench in the bathroom, and then they would (gasps) drown you in ice-cold water, and then they would take off all your clothes and leave you in a cold cell overnight. So you're just fucking freezing. I mean, Peel must have died, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, my. What the fuck? And then there's the other thing called the mad chair, where they would strap you to a chair really tightly with leather, basically like belts. Yeah. And they would, so tight that you couldn't move, and they would only, um, so you were just sitting there in, like, your feces and urine, because <gasps> they would leave you there for days. Oh, my God. And the only time they would unstrap you is when your circulation was cutting off to a point where you almost die. So you just can't, like, you can't move and they're so tight, like, even if you move, it hurts. That's, like, medieval shit. And, uh, the fourth punishment was called the hole. I don't like that. And so... I already don't like it. Under, it was under cell block 14, where they, I guess no one ever really used it, and so they dug a giant, like, uh, Silence of the Lambs hole. (laughs) And basically it was rat and roach infested, and it was dark and dirty, and you were given a cup of water and a piece of bread every other day. And you were locked in there for weeks. The fifth one is my personal favorite. It's called the Iron Gag. <gasps> <laughs> now that's medieval. That sounds like medieval shit. So it, this is specifically if you talk to other people. Like if you tried to interact that's with anyone. That's it? Yeah. This is, this is the worst one and that was like the worst thing you could do there. Because you're not supposed to talk to anyone. You're supposed to think about what you did and think about God. They would put an iron collar... Around your tongue. <gasps> Ew. <laughs> they would clamp it around your tongue. And then that, while it was... I found a picture of it so we can... Don't. Don't show me that. Oh, I'm going to show our listeners. I'll put it on my Twitter if you're like I'm too much change of a all the passwords first. <laughs> 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 um, so they put this iron collar on your tongue, which had like a chain attached to it. So it's like a horse bridle, essentially. Yeah. But it was on your tongue. And it had like a razor underneath it. <gasps> And the chains that came out of it would then be, a, the other end of them would be attached to your wrists that were handcuffed behind your back. So if you moved at all, it would cut through your tongue. Oh my God. Who like, even invented that? Like if you ever, if you tried to like move your arms at all, it would tug on the chain, which would tug on the razor attached to your tongue. And so a lot of people died from bleeding out from that punishment. Oh my, who the fuck invented that even? Who was like... I'm thinking oh. Warden Hardboiled he sounds, Smith. He's hard-boiled, <laughs> hard-boiled egg. He sounds like a freaking asshole. Yes. Yes. Charles Dickens, for some reason, on his getaway to America, he visited in the 1840s uh, the jail, and he wrote that the prisoners there are in such, like, crazed torture that they're, quote, buried alive. <gasps> like, they might as well be at this point because, like, they're not getting out. Yeah. And apparently a lot of people would also intentionally try to talk to other people so that they would get the iron gag so they could make themselves bleed out. So and that they was could the, die? So they could kill That's themselves. That's heartbreaking. So a lot of suicide came from that. But most of the murders came from diseases from like freezing them in a cell sure. or starving them or putting them in a dirty roach invested hole. What on earth? You know. So in uh, 1929... To 1930. He was only there for eight months, but Al Capone was there. A couple of people, um, a couple of big people, like uh, some burglar, like Slick Willie. He was... <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Good old Slick Willie. <laughs> <laughs> well, he was, a, he was a big burglar back then. Um, <laughs> they always had those idiotic names. <laughs> and if anyone asks, it's Slick Willie. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but so Al Capone was there for eight months for carrying a weapon, like a, carrying a concealed what? weapon. Yeah. And... Uh, for how long? Eight months. Okay. And he had the nicest cell there. And uh, it, like, had paintings on the walls. He had a desk. He had a lamp. He had a radio. And he still bitched and moaned. And this is why, though, because the first haunting showed up. While he was there? Yeah, to him. Oh, crazy. So, stepping on your toes, but one day you'll have to tell me what the St. Valentine's Day Massacre is. 
Ooh, we'll get there. <clears throat> so Al Capone was involved in that massacre, and I guess one of the people he killed was named James Clark. And while he, well, Capone was in the cell for eight months, apparently Jim Clark host like, uh, haunted him, like, every night. Oh, what the fuck? Uh, also, I would like to do the whole skeptic view of it, of, like, he could be losing his mind because he's in solitary confinement, blah, 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 blah. We get it, skeptics. Yeah, but... He also had a radio and, like, a t- you know... Like, yeah, he was least likely to go insane. You know what I mean? Yes, totally. Okay. Uh... Boop a doop a doop a doop boop 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 boop. Can we make that our new intro? <laughs> this is Emily's confused <laughs> stuff. Well, because the thing is, I kept hearing about it, so I kept writing it down in different places. All right. Anyway, okay, and we're back. Okay, so let's pretend there was a commercial in there about, <laughs> about... <laughs> until until we can have an advertisement. Casper mattresses are great. <laughs> anyway, back to the story. <laughs> um. So he was saying that Jimmy, he called, the ghost called himself Jimmy, apparently. But Jim Clark. Okay. He was haunting him at night, calling himself Jimmy, or at least Al Capone was calling him Jimmy because the car, the guards remember him screaming in the middle of the night, like would wake up in cold sweats and be like, Jimmy, get away from me, get away from me. Which makes me think that it's not sol- solitary confinement insanity because he was asleep and he was waking up to this. Yeah. Instead of like... He's not just sitting there and all of a sudden but starts talking to himself. But maybe he was having, like, nightmare, like, you know, PTSD nightmares, That's true. you know? I don't know. Well, I guess he would wake up every night and beg Jimmy to leave him alone, <gasps> and he would, like, apologize for hurting him or something like that. Creepy. So that was the first sign of there being something paranormal. Interesting. Um, there ended up just being, uh, like, typical screams and laughter, and the creepiest thing is in cell block 12, uh... You can hear not just screams and laughter, but you hear laughter that gets louder and louder as you walk towards it, and you slowly hear the laughter turning into screaming. <gasps> Ew. Yeah. I thought that was kind of cool. And uh, <laughs> so creepy. Cell block six, uh, someone will cackle. Like, you can hear, like, an evil cackle coming from it, like a rumbling Is that happening cackle. now? Like, people are... Yeah. yeah. Like, oh, wow. So people, it's a... Uh, uh, people go on tours now. Oh, Wow. But uh, people have heard a cackling coming oh, from cell block fuck. six. And if you ignore it, it'll scream your name to get your attention. So you can keep listening to a cackling. Wait, it'll scream your name? Like it'll go, ah, I, don't, I can't do a fucking cackle. Let's hear you cackle. Ah, 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 I fucking know. I don't know. Like, a, like what's Dracula? a witch? <laughs> I don't know. But if you try to ignore it, it'll scream your name. <laughs> or you'll hear it in your head. You'll oh. hear it scream your name so that you have to pay attention to it. Yuck. Like it wants you to know. Um, oh, God. Other people... Uh, have said that there's extreme temperature fluctuations. Uh, there's shadows on footage. Like, they've gotten shadow people walking around. Um, there's the sense everywhere of, like, feeling dread or being watched. In the room where they used to do the water bath torture, apparently everyone always is really cold when they go in oh. there, which is super sad. Yeah, it is sad. Uh, there is, I think, Ghost Adventures. I was about to say, I guarantee you. One of the shows. Show, one of the shows went there. Zach Baggins. Ugh. He blocked me on Twitter one time. <laughs> I heard that story. We'll talk about that another day. <laughs> that makes you sound so much more famous than we are. <laughs> no, it's like we got into a little spat. Yeah. No, I was just behaving inappropriately. God. <laughs> uh, so someone did an EVP, which is uh, electrical mm-hmm. voice phenomena, and the they caught on tape. Uh, someone in one of the cells saying, I'm lonely, (gasps) which is super sad. That's really sad. I know. So uh, in the 40s, after Capone has left, uh, there's also shadowy figures that turn corners when you try to approach it. So like, it's almost like if you try to chase it, it'll like turn a corner and then you turn the corner too and there's nothing there. Uh, There's dark figures of guards that got murdered there. Um, But the dark figures are like in the towers where only the cops could go. (gasps) Uh, Because I guess I read somewhere that two murderers, or two murderers, Jesus, two guards were murdered, at least. By inmates? By each other? Yeah, inmates. Well, I don't know. Uh, (laughs) And then uh, a bunch of, I think it was like, it said something like, two guards were murdered, tens of inmates were murdered by violence, and then hundreds were murdered, and hundreds of inmates were murdered by uh, disease, probably from all the torture. Um. 
But in the 40s, uh, shadowy figures and dark figures were a big thing. You could hear the evil cackling even then. Um, shadows would slide down the walls. <gasps> Ew. I don't know what that means, but I don't want to find it out. It doesn't sound good. And a fa- in cell block four, faces would just appear in front of you. Like you would blink and there'd be a face there and then you'd blink again and it's gone. And there was typical door banging, talking, footsteps, keys jingling, insane screaming. You know, the usual. Ugh. Um, the big thing that happened that everyone still talks about, I guess, on the tour is that there was a locksmith named Gary Johnson who he went there to he went there to remove a lock that was over 100 years old on mm-hmm. a cell that hadn't been opened in a long time and i guess when he unlocked it they say that he essentially opened a gateway or <gasps> something cuz by since that lock had been there for so long by the time he unlocked it he in some way released all the spirits that were locked in there like that had never been unlocked out of it before yikes and he had an out-of-body experience that to this day he will not talk about like he'll say it in like chunks to people so people have kind of gathered his story that way but he's still around and he won't talk about it like Like, he had the the experience as he unlocked like as he unlocked it he said like as soon as it unclicked his hand was on the key and then he said he couldn't move, he couldn't speak, he was just frozen, and he could feel, like, this overwhelming, like, dark <gasps> matter on him. And uh, he said all of these faces showed up around him, oh my like, God. started looking at him. Uh, he saw, like, the wall, he said the walls looked like they were melting because there were so many dark shadows, like, moving across it that it looked like the walls were moving. Um, one of the dark shadows was a full figure in front of him that screamed, come to me. <gasps> And then the dark shadow, like, flew at him and then vanished right in front of him. He said he could see it happening to him, and he was also having an out-of-body experience where he could watch it happening to him, and neither one of them could move or do anything (gasps) about it. Which freaks me out that his astral projection also didn't have control. was like, fuck this. He was like, "Uh uh-oh. We're screwed. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And then while this was all happening, he could hear all the... I guess dark entities or dark spirits saying shit to him. And he could also hear whispers from like a hundred people and he could hear giggling and laughing and screaming and crying and Um, like every, every type of emotion. He could hear everyone that's ever been in there. He could hear them doing all of it at once. I hope he's in therapy. I I bet he is. That sounds horrible. And uh, basically it was just like he said, he had unexplained visions and hallucinations and he just still to this day can't explain it. And he gets really nervous talking about it now. But all of the, like, people screaming your name and the evil cackling and all that stuff, visitors, staff, guards, and inmates from the time all corroborate that those happen. Yikes. It's called the Eastern State Penitentiary, for anyone who wants to look it up. Let's go there. Nah. Nah. All right. How do you feel about that? Do you want to talk about (sighs) murder? Yes. Do you want to talk about that? So I don't know if you've heard about this one. Um, A couple podcasts have covered it but it's like a really really good story it's called the okay also full disclosure my first language is german so i'm gonna say it in like the german way because i don't know how else to say it Uh, i'm already i mean i'm impressed every time you speak german around me i'm always like (laughs) whoa all right it's not it's not that impressive oh wait hon can i read it can i read it first and say the really chopped up oh that's a fun idea okay so you can laugh at me let me hear oh okay i can see it Okay. Wait. Oh, that definitely says Hinterkaifeck. Close. Oh. Yeah. Okay. The Hinterkaifeck murders. Let's say it again slowly. Hinterkaifeck? Yeah, girl. All right. Good for you and your languages. Actually, this was suggested to me by a Twitter user named Tapplesauce. You didn't say that in German. <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> um, Thanks, Tapplesauce. Thanks, Tapplesauce. So my parents um are both from germany and my mom actually grew up a couple hours from where this happened um Hmm. and when i was living in berlin i read like a novel based on this story but i didn't know that it was i was like god this book was really good but like a little dramatic and turns out it's real like it actually (laughs) happened it's based on a true story i didn't even know god you were just like i was like this is a little dramatic you're being so dramatic right now it's like it's (laughs) even happened to you turns out it was not fictional that's sad all right Let's hear about it. All right. So this murder takes place in 1922. Uh, The Gruber family lived on a farm 60 miles north of Munich. Mm. I I think I might know this story. I don't know all the information, though. It's a good one. 
You probably do. I mean, a lot of podcasts have covered it, but it's... I think Tumblr is where I got it from. Oh, maybe. Okay. Anyway, I've only... If it's, I've seen it, it's like a meme of picture. It's like, like made its rounds a little bit. But okay. Lay it on me, preferably in English. All right. <laughs> I'll try my best. <laughs> um, so it took place about 60 miles north of Munich in 1922. Um, the father of the Gruber family, Andreas... Oh, shut up. Who <laughs> was not... <laughs> Was not. There's a lot of. I'm. I apologize. I'm, I know, I'm stoked. I apologize in advance. There's a lot of weird ass German names. So okay. how do you say that in English? Andreas. Yeah, Andreas. I think sure, like the Andreas. Andreas. Fault. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Was not well liked um, by his neighbors. He was described as an unfriendly loner who beat his wife and Cute. was abusive to his children. And actually, only one of his children ended up surviving his abuse. Ugh. And the daughter who did survive his abuse uh, was actually, he was infatuated with her and obsessed with her and they had an incestual relationship. Yucko. I know. And it was rumored in town that Victoria, who was his daughter, that her son was actually the product of her father and her <sighs> incestual relationship. Nope. I know. Um, was she cool with it? Or? I don't think, it, well, I mean, she was really young and I think part, he kept her under his like really strict control he refused uh, to let her to marry she didn't know better yeah so it was apparently they were just a very miserable family and sounds like it unhappy and he was a violent father mm -hmm. um so leading up to these murders there were some strange incidents that happened uh that nobody can figure out how they're all connected but i can tell me all about them em is going to crack the case <laughs> <laughs> that's what we do we solve 100 year old unsolved mysteries um, okay. So the maid that they've had, they had for a long time, suddenly quit her job and left immediately. She said she'd been hearing strange voices and noises in and around the house and was too afraid to stay any longer. She said she was convinced the house was haunted. Um, and when she said her goodbyes, people reported that she was white faced and emaciated. Um, oh, so wow. the Grubers did not know what to do. They were like, she just took off. So they were like, <laughs> they chalked it up to her being quote, mentally disturbed <laughs> and let it be. <laughs> I could chalk myself up to mentally disturbed. I know. For a lot of things. <laughs> that explains away a lot of my behavior. <laughs> um, so six months later, Andreas noted footprints in the snow coming from the woods leading up to their house, but none leading back. Mm. So he was really freaked out and he thought there was an intruder. So he did a thorough search of the house, did a thorough search of the property, all the barns, everything, found nothing. Um, and so just, you know, let it be. That night, he heard footsteps coming from the attic. Again, checked it out. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Couldn't figure out what was going on. Uh, the next morning, the family awoke to find an unfamiliar newspaper on the kitchen table that none of them had Shut bought up. or ordered. And a few, a few days after that, a set of house keys went missing, and um, everyone was looking for them, didn't know where they were, and while he was going to the barn, he noticed, the father, he noticed that the lock had scratch marks on it, as if someone was trying to pick Ugh. the lock. Um, and he didn't, he didn't report these things to police, but he confided in his neighbors about them, so people later were like, oh, he was telling us all these crazy things were happening. Um, and the day after these discoveries... The new maid, Maria Baumgartner. Good for you. I'm just going to say it the real way. No, uh, Maria I mean, Baumgartner. It's better to not butcher it, I guess. So the day after these discoveries, the new maid, Maria Baumgartner, arrived. Um, unfortunately, Maria's first day on the job would also be her last. Ooh, <laughs> that was fun. Just like throwing some foreshadowing in there. Good. I guess it's not foreshadowing if I'm it's literally very direct, actually. telling you she's about to die. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you she's dead, but she's dead. But she wasn't living anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, um, on April 4th, 1922, people in town started to get nervous. They were wondering what was going on. They hadn't seen the family in a while. Uh, uh, the children were not attending school. Victoria, the, the mother, or you know, the, mm -hmm. uh, she hadn't been attending choir practice. And the mailman noticed that they hadn't been picking up their mail. So a group of concerned neighbors went to check on the farm. Um, they did not notice anything like unusual about anything surrounding the farm. So they opened up the barn and found the bodies of Andreas, his wife, his daughter, Victoria, and the elder daughter, Cecilia, lying in a pool of blood. Stranger, their bodies had been carefully stacked upon one another. <gasps> and Like a cake. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I like how your first thought is I have a, food. <laughs> I have priorities. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So anyway, <laughs> so they. Who was that? Like, was it like 
the like heaviest on the bottom? Do we know the like the order? Um, <laughs> Not no. that it makes it better. I just I, think it'd be a little more sick if they put the smallest child at the bottom. Well, actually, I'll tell you what happened to the smallest child. Mm. I know. So, okay, they were stacked on top of each other and covered in hay. Um, so the search party was obviously horrified. They went frantically looking for the rest of the family um, and found them in the farmhouse. So the youngest grandson, Josef, who was two years old, was found dead in his cot. He'd been bludgeoned to death. Uh. I know. The new housemaid, Maria, that we just discussed, yeah. uh, was found murdered in her bed chambers. So there were six people, the five members of the family and the maid who had been just brutally murdered. Oh, and they were killed with a pickaxe, by the oh, way. Oh, that's like the worst first day ever. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> this job, like, we complain about our jobs, but like, that job sucks. Yeah. Um, Do we know like who died first or anything? Well, this is what, so they called the police and um, they showed up within, from Munich within a couple hours and determined that the victims had been killed with a pickaxe uh, by blows to the head. Uh, they, what they could make of it was that uh, Andreas, Cecilia, Victoria, and the little Cecilia, so his... Cecilia Jr.? Yeah, there was a Cecilia Good Jr. Good for her. I know. Oh, feminism at its best. I know. It's just such a random story. So they were somehow lured to the barn one by one mm-hmm. and slaughtered one by one. So they... Ew. The, whoever murdered them would lure one to the barn, kill them, then the next, then the next. So they either had to know the person or they were like... Ugh, this is horrible, but like the BTK killer, do you know about them? Vaguely. You got to do that one eventually. That's a good one. I mean, it's really fucked up. Write it on the board. BTK stands for like bind, torture, kill or something like that. But I mean, if they, if he tied them all up and just brought each of them in one by one. Well, it, the way it looked was that they would come into the barn by, to check out whatever was going on or, and then he would just immediately attack them. So it was more of like a surprise attack as far as they could tell. This is another um, one of those, like, basically breaking and entering. I was going to say, you're not going to like this I one. I hate this. <clears throat> Victoria, the daughter, had signs of strangulation also, but that wasn't what killed her. The blows to the head killed her. Um, so the aut- This is the worst part. Um, okay. The autopsies revealed that the little Cecilia, age seven, had survived the attack at first <gasps> and laid next to her dead family in the barn oh. for several hours. Oh. She had torn out tufts of her hair as she laid there. And finally, hours later, succumbed to her wounds. Oh, my God. Because her parents and grandparents had all been killed. And oh, then my she God. Was, oh, my God. Oh, my God. She, she, she really she, just died of a broken heart. She was seven. Well, she also had her head split open, but she was uh, like... I, they it's can't, just the awful. The listeners can't see me right now, but my face is buried in my hands. I know. It's awful. It's, <sighs> this part, like, really just... That fucks me up. Uh, anyway. I mean, I'm I'm not seven, and I can't imagine what it'd be like lying next to my dead parent. Oh, no. oh my and god! Oh my god! While, imagine being seven and no one's there to explain it to you, and well, you're hurt, while you're dying, and you're confused, and you probably don't know what dying is. Oh my god! And she's like so gravely injured. I mean, it, two hours later, she's dead. You know. So <sighs> anyway, the other weird thing was that all the bodies were also covered in some way. So the bodies in the barn were covered with hay. The maid. Hey, what's a what's a gay horse eat? Hey. hey! I was gonna say hey, hey, hey. <laughs> I was. Close. I needed to light up the mood. I I couldn't handle it. This is how M uh, <laughs> deals with. Uh, I'm an only child, and I'm a, I'm a child of divorce, so I just handle things the Chandler Bing way, and I just Chandler. I just laugh about things. I can't handle it. Oh, it's okay. We'll forgive you. Um, the maid was covered with bed sheets and the little boy was covered with one of his mother's skirts in his cot. So that whoever did it covered their bodies, which I think is indicative of like, he doesn't want to see them. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, so the murder, obviously like it was in a small rural town. It shook the German people to their core. It was hugely sensational. Um, it was brutal, but also it was just strange. Um, one of the other things that happened was the, it looked like the murderer, had stuck around for several days at the farm after he had killed everyone. Like, ate their food and everything, too? He or she, I guess, ate food from the kitchen, fed the cattle, took care of the farm. Oh, good. The fucking cows are safe. I know. Set a fire in the fireplace because neighbors all reported seeing chimney smoke while they were working. So they thought the family was okay, um, but they hadn't seen them in a while, so they went to check. They were all dead. Um, But for three or four days, this guy stayed around. Uh, Even let the dog out. Yeah, well, took okay, care, thank took care God of the dog. he didn't kill the dog. Oh, Jesus. This story would be over if he hurt the <laughs> I dog. I would be crying. <laughs> We'd be holding each other Not in a corner. Not the dog. 
Um, so at first, the police thought the motive might have been burglary because, you know, vandals and that kind of thing. Right. Or vagrants, I mean, and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, but a significant amount of gold coins and jewelry had been untouched in the house. And if someone had stayed there for several days, they would have seen all the valuables. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. and oh, and one of the beds had been slept in, in one of the bedrooms. Like Goldilocks. Basically. Great. Like a really sick and twisted Goldilocks. Yeah. But yeah, so they kind of moved past the burglary theory because nothing was taken. Uh -huh. um, another odd detail is that Victoria had emptied her bank account a few weeks prior she left a 700 gold mark donation to her church for, quote, missionary work, but the rest of her money was unaccounted for and just kind of had vanished. Um, so that was one thing that the police didn't know how to tie to it or whether it even had mm -hmm. anything to do with it, but it was just another odd part of this story. Um, they questioned more than 100 suspects all the way till 1986, could never figure out who did it. Uh, their biggest culprit uh, was this guy named Schlittenbauer. <laughs> I can't even imagine what that looks like. <gasps> what a name. Uh, who had been one of Victoria's suitors. <clears throat> and Victoria always claimed that her son, Josef, the two-year-old, was Schlittenbauer's child. Um, but, you know, everyone assumed he was actually her father, the child right. she bore with her father. Right. Um, so some people believed that he had lashed out in, you know, a fit of rage. Oh, because his girl was cheating on him with her dad. Yeah, and his son wasn't his son. That's... Um, Germany meets Jerry Springer. <laughs> yeah. And, <laughs> and like Stephen King. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Fair. And another theory is that he wanted to escape alimony payments because he was still paying uh, alimony, but in the woman, he had remarried and had a child with another woman, but his child died. Uh, and so some people think maybe he was bitter that he was paying alimony for a child that he wasn't even sure was his. Right. 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 But again, there was no way to connect him to that really. And he brutally murdered like a two-year-old so who knows i mean i definitely remember hearing about this on tumblr but like i said it was a picture with like a caption at the bottom so it just told you the gist yeah. i did not know any of this actual it's, information it's pretty crazy well well oh here's another thing another reason people think that this guy was involved is that he was a member of the original search party when they went looking for the family and the dog apparently reacted really viciously toward him when they went in the, oh, the barn and wouldn't like couldn't deal being around him but nobody like Nobody That's horrible, because if him. you die, Gia's going to freak the fuck out around me, and they're going to think that. Yeah. <laughs> and that's your thought right now? <laughs> oh, you better not die, because everyone's going to think I well, killed you. Well, my thought was like, what dog actually really hates anyone? And I was like, your dog my hates dog. me. <laughs> I was like, oh, maybe if you die, I should stay away from the search If party. I die, everyone will be a suspect, probably. <laughs> <laughs> or, yeah. Um, that's Gio's best alibi, probably. Yeah, probably. He can probably pull it off. Uh... Yeah, so anyway, so he, the dog reacted viciously to him, wouldn't stop barking anytime he was near. And the biggest thing is that this guy, Schlittenbauer, mm -hmm. seemed remarkably unperturbed, as a neighbor said, by all the bodies, even though his son was supposedly one yeah. of the dead bodies. Um, he was able to unstack all of the bot, like, then they were in a lot of blood because um, they had been bludgeoned by a pickaxe. But so apparently he was able to move the bodies around without even flinching, and everybody else was just. I mean, it's their neighbors, and they're seeing right. their bloody bodies, and we're... My big thought is it would make the most sense, because if he didn't drag them out, which I guess you would have seen drag marks in the snow, like, if he, if they were walking out with them, it would have to be someone they all knew. For, if, for what him. do you mean? It had to be someone they all knew for them to follow him out to the barn. Without no, a well, people... Because th I think it was in the middle of the night, so people think maybe there was a noise or, like, something... Oh. that got them out of the house to go to the barn because why else would they one by one but also no i mean i get that but if i were in a house with my dad my mom and my older siblings mm -hmm. and if i heard a noise my dad went out and never came back and then my mom went out and never came back i'm not fucking going in that barn yeah that's fair also the two-year-old like would he like i imagine the two-year-old went last like he killed everyone then went inside and grabbed the baby Unless they well, saw he killed him in his cot. Prints. No, he killed him in his oh, cot. Oh, wow. That's right. And then he killed the maid in her bedchambers. But, yeah, nobody knows because... At least the maid knew, like, it's not my fucking job to go check outside. I'm just the maid. <laughs> yeah, I know. She was like, I'm hiding in my bedchambers. I don't know. It's just very weird. Nobody can figure it out. Um, but, so, when they were moving the bodies, they were like, why are you touching the bodies? Like, mm -hmm. the police aren't here. And he's like, I'm looking for my son. But I guess he said it really calmly and just not... Right. Like, he just didn't seem very he was detached. perturbed about it. So, who knows? But they really couldn't ever figure out a concrete way to pin it to him. 
Uh, the only other suspect they had was Victoria's ex-husband, who had supposedly been killed in the French trenches during World War One. The Frenches? The French or French trenches. <laughs> Uh, I'm really just like I'm uncomfortable. I'm so just trying. Try, I'm just trying to pull anything she can. <laughs> I was a clown, guys. <laughs> yeah, your clown is showing again. All right. So supposedly he had been killed in the war, but nobody ever found his body. Um, and two people came forward claiming to have met a Russian soldier after World War II, who had himself claimed to be the Hinterkaifeck killer. So, but uh, soldiers that he had been with claimed they saw him die in the war. So it's unclear whether but they think like maybe he came back and like realized she had been sleeping with this one guy and had a baby and freaked out and murdered everyone but again like the weird part about this too is that the maid who heard the noises that was six months before the murders even happened so either this person was like living in their home somehow undetected for six months before he (laughs) that's definitely your dog sorry before he murdered everyone like, nobody knows what the hell, who... And then he stayed there for three days. Yeah. So it's, like, hard to imagine who on earth, you I know? Mean, he could have just been a crazy person. But he covered his tracks really but well. But that's the thing is, like, they could not find... You know, somehow it was, like, done so... And obviously nowadays, like, if a guy had slept there for a week... Yeah, they could DNA, DNA everywhere. Exactly. Everywhere. And so recently the police academy... Or t- students uh, in 2007 of the police academy decided to reopen the case and see if they could figure anything out. But they said it just was so long ago that everything was so primitive back then that evidence was hard to find. uh, Witnesses had died and basically they closed it again and said it'll probably stay unsolved forever. Until we create some technology we don't even know about. Exactly. Yeah. Well, that's great. A time travel machine or something. Mm. Well, so that's that's a good way to ruin my night. Thanks. Sad. Sad. Anyway. And that's why we drink guys. And that's why we drink. So, whew, another heavy episode. Yeah. It's getting harder and harder to title these things when there's nothing funny about them. <laughs> you know? We can use your lava lamp statement. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a Nora made of lava. That has nothing to do with either story. Exactly. They have to not be about the murder because <laughs> then it's just sad. Anyway, thank you guys for listening to yet another segment of us falling apart as human beings. <laughs> <laughs> what did I say? Oh, we're, we're all a disaster. Yeah. Yeah. It's fine. Um, thank you to PBR and, uh, House of Pies for fueling our drinking problems. And neither sponsoring us. Yet. Um, also, we do want to say thank you guys for all, everyone sending in stories. Yes. Uh, we have another listeners episode coming up April 1st. It'll be out. Yeah. Um, we do request though, and we need everyone's ears to perk up for this. We need you to send your stories to our email, to the email. And that's why we drink at gmail.com because we have just been getting like, like I, I don't just so many stories, Yeah. but if you've sent something to us and you really want us to talk about it, copy and paste whatever you already sent us and send it well, in an email. Okay, to wait. Us. Well, I've, everything I've gotten so far, I've like categorized and organized. God, you're so, well, no, but I didn't so want to lame. Well, that's the hard thing is like people send me messages and it's been like weeks and I don't want to lose them and not get, right. you know what I mean? So we really, we really, really care about all this. Like, I, right. I don't want to like really leave care people out stories. just because we lost it in the Twitter world. But so uh, until if, and for further notice, please, please <laughs> email us. Cause we don't want to fuck up your stories and we don't want to think you, we don't want you to think that we like didn't like it or forgot about it. Right. Just everything, please send all of your stories to. And that's why we drink at gmail.com. We will love you so much. We will appreciate you listening to our instructions. <laughs> <laughs> we are very strict. <laughs> she speaks German. Yes. Everything sounds strict there. I should say it in German and then everyone will do it. I, I, don't, I wouldn't even know what you mean. Nobody. I'm not going to do that. Okay. All right. How do you say it, and that's why we drink in German? It's not like a joking thing. I want to know how we say it for our international followers. <laughs> The whole one that lives in Germany. Und deswegen trinken wir. You all have to teach me that one. So <laughs> I'll slow this podcast down. We'll just do like the 0.5 playback and say it really slow. Yeah. Cool. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Hit us up on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, email. We love you all. Thank you for listening. Goodbye. And that's, that's why, why we, we drink. drink. Peace.